everyone. My name is Aaron Clark. I'm the director for the Hill Aerospace Museum, and with me is Mr. Brandon Hedges, our Restoration Chief Extraordinaire. And there's two reasons why we're coming to you today. The first reason is this. We've been getting a lot of questions from around the world about our new F-117. And we're going to cover some of those questions today and give you guys some answers. Secondly, we're here to announce, because there's been so much interest in this airframe, that we're going to do a reoccurring series on Facebook that will highlight the restoration process to show you what we do, who we work with, the types of materials we use, to bring us back to its original appearance. With all that said, let's dive into some questions about this airframe. One of the most common questions we've gotten is, why does it look the way it does? If you guys are familiar with the F-117, it looked much different than this when it was in active service. Uh, it may look like it's missing some parts. Obviously, it's a different color. So, Brandon's gonna tell us why the aircraft looks the way it does right now. Brandon, can you get into that a little bit? So to start, the most obvious thing missing is the leading edge of the entire airframe. You can see it's a pretty flat surface. It can't fly in that format. It wouldn't be very aerodynamic. We're going to have to go through and recreate the leading edges. We're going to use composite material, and we're excited to work with the local Davis Tech College. Their students are going to get to have hands-on experience to fabricate these leading edges. And then as you look up, you can see our inlet grids aren't in. We do have them. We have a few repairs that are composite repairs inside. And once we complete those, we'll be able to install the inlet grids. And then let's go up and take a look at our cockpit. So as you can see here, we have our mostly intact cockpit. We we're really excited to receive it this way. There's not a whole lot of work we're going to have to do uh, for display condition. Now that we've come to the back of the aircraft, you can see there's still more components missing. One of them being the exhaust bricks that were up top here. We'll have to recreate those uh, along with our vertical stabilizers. The leading and trailing edges are missing. Uh, they'll be mounted once we're complete up here on the aircraft. Um, and then if you come forward to the back side of our wing, you can see the flaps here are missing the trailing edge. Uh, those will also be completed by uh, our local tech college. Uh, should give the students a pretty good hands-on experience for real, realistic airframe creation. All right, on to the second most common question we got. People want to know how we got this massive airframe to the museum. It obviously wasn't in Utah before. So did we use a train? Did Santa Claus put it on his sleigh? Did we hire a horse and buggy to bring this to the museum? The answer is no to all those. But it took a lot of effort, a lot of time, uh, and a lot of logistics to make it happen. happen. And Brandon spearheaded that effort. Brandon, how did we get the F-117 to our museum? Well, it all started with months of planning, uh, calling up different entities, public and private, to coordinate their efforts. Uh, after that, we started in Tonopah for the process to remove the wings. They completed that, and then we needed to load it. We had two semi-trucks, one considered a super load, because we had a 19 and a half wide load with wings removed. Uh, to take that into visualization, that's about two lanes on an interstate or highway. Um, Along with that, we had to coordinate efforts with a pilot car service to escort them and highway patrol through Nevada and Utah along the route. Once it got to the Hill Aerospace Museum, we had support from the 309th maintenance group uh, to help lift it off of the trailer and Tonopah support to drop the gear and get it moved into the hangar. And we'd like to extend a thank you to all the entities that helped us and their professionalism along the way. Yeah, we've had a lot of help. Uh, during this whole entire process and it's just been incredible to see the excitement and the willingness from everyone to help us get this aircraft here. Okay, the third most common question people know about is the restoration itself. How long is it going to take? Well, right now we're projecting about 18 to 24 months. And also another part of that question is who's involved with restoring this airframe? Do Keebler elves come here at night and help restore it? I don't think so. It takes a lot of people, a lot of professionals. So Brandon, can you tell us Who's restoring this airframe? So after a meeting with a group of select volunteers who are helping brainstorm, they used to work the airframe themselves. They're coming in to help with certain parts of the restoration. We also have the Davis Applied Technology College. Their composite program are going to be helping us restore the composite components on the airframe. All right, folks, we're down to our last question. Uh, what better place to answer our last question 
than the weapons bay of the F-117 where we can actually see what we call the nose art uh, of this airframe, Midnight Riders. Uh, tail number 799 uh, was named Midnight Rider decades ago by the airmen who maintained it and flew it. So pretty cool. But anyways, on to the question. The last question we get is why, why do we get an F-117 in this museum? Uh, well, if you go to the mission of this museum is to preserve and promote the history of Hill Air Force Base and Utah Aviation. So what connection did Hill Air Force Base have to the F-117? Well, back in 1998, the Air Force assigned the mission uh, to repair F-117s across the globe through what we call a Combat Logistics Support Squadron, who did what we call Aircraft Battle Damage Repair. And they traveled the globe and fixed not just the F-117, but F-22s, F-16s, and that was their job. So that's our connection to this aircraft. And we're pretty proud of it, and we're super happy to have one at the museum. With all that said, let me remind you that we are going to start doing reoccurring videos that highlight the restoration of this airframe. So please keep on the lookout for that.